Well guys, this is a video we never, ever wanted to make. Why? Now we promised you that the next time you saw us would be the start of season three. This isn't season three, but we just wanted to share this with you because this is, as much as it pains me to say it, happening. When you last saw us, we were kicking goals and ticking boxes. Crisp, mint, beautiful. She's going to rip. Finalizing the last of our upgrades and a few repairs in preparation for the next leg of our circumnavigation. This is not season three, not season two anymore, but this is the boat job extravaganza. Nakama has never looked better with a new tiller, new ground tackle, a new mainsail and new comms. Ooh, we were just waiting on a few more deliveries and then we'd be ready to tackle Australia's wild west coast. Nakama looks really good. The only problem is, is that she is very, very slowly sinking again. Yes, you heard that correctly. Nakama has last minute decided to blow a plugger. Why? But it's been a few weeks, so we're going to take you back to before we found ourselves stranded on the hard stand. Our final and very exciting delivery has finally arrived. You'll never guess what just rocked up. Our last package. The final. The final piece of the puzzle. <laughs> You carried it down here by yourself, eh? Yeah. Yeah, you see that? That was all me. <laughs> I feel like I've been waiting my whole life for this moment. Yeah. Oh, it smells <laughs> good. <laughs> I can't believe, man, the floor. Oh, the floor on it is just exceptional. Holy moly. This is gonna change everything. We didn't lie when we said exciting. <laughs> you may know that we are currently in the thick of croc infested waters. We just seen our first ever croc. And well, the crocs are only going to get denser. So we've brought in reinforcements in the form of our dream tender. It's got a bell locker. I can't believe this is like, this is a big moment. This 2.6 meter hard bottom high field is the foundation to our croc combating plan. Well, that's unreal. Then we yeah, can both cool. have a seat. You can sit there and I can sit there. That's way better, eh? Or like you can drive as well sometimes if you yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> well, I could be having my beer in there. <laughs> Don't drink and drive. <laughs> She just can't get in by a croc. I'd be absolutely devastated if she got in by a croc. <laughs> wait, wait, look at your feet. Are they dirty? Are your dirty feet dirty? If I get them wet. True. They are dirty though. Don't dirty my tender. The floor's pretty nice, hey? It's so good on the foot. The floor is honestly. Look at how dry it is. Like, it wouldn't be wet yet anyway, but it's very dry. She is a beauty. Whee! <laughs> we thought this was it. We'd been waiting months and finally we were ready to go. Well, pretty sure we could get going now. This is it. This is it. We're off. But we don't intend on rowing ourselves through croc infested creeks, nor do we intend on intimidating them with the size of this tender. Our plan is to be able to outrun them. <laughs> this moment that we realized we were about to take our adventure to a whole new level. Right 
All right, so the Tenders a high field classic 260. We wanted the classic because if you're gonna go a high field, I mean, why not have a false floor? I can't wait that we don't have to get our camera gear wet and drones can sit safely on the floor and everything. Normally we used to sit all our groceries and all our camera gear on our feet in the tender because the floor was always wet, but this is just unreal. This tender's rated to have a 15 horsepower, obviously four stroke, um, which is significantly heavier than this. This is a two stroke. I wanted to get a two stroke because one, I can't afford to buy a brand new four stroke outboard and two, it's obviously probably slightly more complex than our old outboard, but I got to know our other outboard pretty well and I feel confident that I can fix most two stroke base level issues without like it being a serious engine malfunction or whatever. So I wouldn't know how to do that in a four stroke engine. I think it, I'm, well, they're a bit more complex and I haven't had any experience with them. So it was important to me that I knew how to like fix what we had. It's second hand. You'll notice that it does have some quirks, like it's missing its rubber handle grip and it's got a couple scratches on it, which I think happened when we freighted it here from the Gold Coast. Other than that, so far, so good. I just can't begin to tell you how stoked I am. This outboard is obviously a lot bigger than our old four horsepower Mercury. We were a little concerned that it wouldn't even fit on Nakama's small transom. There was only one way to find out whether this outboard would actually work for us. Let's see if this bad boy fits, eh? She's not too bad, not as big as I thought. We just need a new ladder. Actually, there's someone on here, we keep getting co a comment about someone loving our ladder. Yeah. Now's your chance if you want it. Honestly, I've been waiting for an excuse to get rid of it because I hate it so much. At least now we can get a little smaller compact ladder. So, sorry, that ladder's going. By the time you see this, it's probably already gone. So, um, it's, too late, eh? it's probably too late to even collect it. So yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Anywho, we're not finished with new things just yet. Within our last delivery, there was another special something. All right, so not only is there the high field in the box, we actually needed some new running rigging. So we had a mate of ours um, in Brisbane, Darren, the yacht rigger. If you need your rigging checked, he's an absolute legend. Check him out, that's not a paid plug or anything. Just, he's an absolute legend. So we had him drop by Highfield and stuff the package with some new running rigging for us. So this will replace some of our old spinnaker halyards and stuff like that that we're looking, let's just say sus. We'll show you when we get them down, they're pretty sus. So that's really exciting too. Um, thanks Darren, you're a bloody legend. Although this may look like a box for a sewing machine with a Woolworths delivery inside, the contents will have Nakama looking like a new boat. Ooh. That is groovy. Groovy green, they say. That is groovy. Basically, all our forward rigging here, like our two main halyards and our spinnaker topping lift, were completely shot. So we've got to replace them. And then, woo! And then, and then we've got some new sheets as well. So, gonna get it all installed. Not gonna talk too much about it. It's basically just mousing it and running it through, pulling the old one. Literally out with the old and that makes the in with the new. It's all, that's how it works. Swap over. You go like this. We should probably put, should we piss Facebook people off and put the green one on <laughs> Well, we only, we don't have a red one. So I reckon we still put green on starboard. Man, Nakama, even just the small things like getting some new halyards and whatnot, is just gonna make the boat look. Have you smelt them yet? Pretty good. Does that smell good? <laughs> Probably does, eh? That smells pretty good. Some nice new ropes. Pretty good. So, we were just going to tie them together, but then Simon just had the idea of just doing a loopy loop, loopy loop stitch between the two of them. And they'll run smoother through. Right? And then, yeah. So, I'm still on the technical stuff. I'm just going to put a little bit of duct tape around it. <laughs> just to make sure there's no, like, edges getting caught and whatnot. That's how you attach two ropes. Just like that, eh? Just like that. Soph does the stitching, I do the duct taping. Good. Loose, eh? <laughs> Australia's loose, stozzy bloke. This is it. So 
So this next rope's the sussest of all sussness of our ropes. I'm hoping it just holds on long enough to be able to mouse itself out of there and off the boat. This last job of replacing our running rigging and head sail sheets, and of course, receiving our new tender, as well as successfully acquiring a new outboard, officially meant our list of repairs and upgrades was complete. We were almost underway. Just left to do was service the engine. The sail drive oil looks really good, looks in good nick, and um, the fuel filters are still looking pretty clean. And, of course, provision for the next few months at sea. This is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Just a little idea for you of how much dry food costs. This round, look at our receipt. <laughs> this round costed us $749. Now we just gotta figure out where to put it all. The biggest challenge is figuring out where it's all gonna go. Playing Tetris. Shopping for a few months takes a few days. Day one was dry food. Day two was fresh and frozen food. Fresh shop. We made a new hanging spot because we've got new levels of amounts of vegetables on the boat. Lots of stuff. Been playing a lot of Tetris. A lot of Tetris. And day three, well, booze but we didn't film that one because that's just a little embarrassing. And so with our list complete, engine serviced and food in every nook and cranny aboard the boat, it was time to leave. Okay, so we were meant to leave yesterday. Well, so we thought. It's deja vu of last season. We're about to leave. We open up the floorboards to do one little bilge check and we're flooding with salt water. Unfortunately, our transducers are leaking again. Not just one this time, but the two dodgy transducers we had installed back in Airlie Beach are back to haunt us. With the same intention of bettering Nakama, last year we had two new transducers installed while on the heart stand. Transducers are so far looking good, we'll soon know if they're taking on water when we get put in the water. After splashing back in, one leaked the very first night. The transducers we had professionally installed, one of them is holding up brilliantly, one of them is not. Which meant we were back out of the water soon after to have it reinstalled. It's been three days since we got dropped back in the water and we are back in the slip. And now, close to the first year anniversary of the transducer installation, they have now both started taking on water again. Why? We just emptied out the bilges this morning after emptying them last night before bed, and it looks like we've taken on about four and a half litres of water overnight. Definitely not ideal. Really hoping for a smooth and quick resolution that's also safe. Yesterday was our push out day. We're not eager to push off into complete wilderness with a boat that's taking on water. So what are we gonna do about it? Hopefully we can just do a temporary underwater fix. We've got a diver coming so they can properly have a look at it without, well, we were considering doing it ourselves, but we don't have a hooker or anything like that. So it would have been us diving under, running out of breath and popping back up. It's not really enough to give us a proper look of what's going on and make sure that it's done properly. So fingers crossed we have a diver coming today. I don't see why we can't reseal it underwater and then we'll have to come out of the water in Perth. We're just really trying not to come out of the water here. So after a brief chat, we had a very soggy man in fluorescent overalls in the living room sussing out the job. Drying off was unnecessary as he was straight back in the water. We've asked him to put a healthy coat of underwater epoxy to seal the transducers. So everyone that we've talked to today has just sort of said just stick a flex it from the top. However, we'd probably rather the waterproofing coming from the bottom rather than the top. Have you heard that? That's him in the water now. <laughs> Unfortunately, when he came to the surface, he wasn't bearing good news. That solution was a bit of a failure. Um, I got a new hat. We got a new hat. He, he wasn't sticking to the a blade of anti foul basically. It's like, do we maybe do a fix from the inside? But as we said, we would rather do our waterproofing from the outside in. And if we're to sickle it from the inside, we would be making our lives miserable when it comes to resealing them properly down the line, which we've learned from experience. <laughs> <laughs> I've nothing to. F
can grab onto anymore. So we're back to the drawing board, and after a bit of swearing to help us come to terms with the situation, ah! we've made our very tough decision. So today is the day we're leaving the marina. Nakama looks really good. The only problem is, is that she is very, very slowly sinking. So unfortunately we're leaving the marina but we're not going very far. Um, we're just going to anchor out the front until we, until it's tomorrow and then we're getting lifted, um, unfortunately. So yes, while it's an expensive couple of days now and a few more days of hard work, we've decided that it's the wise option to put Nakama on the hard and get this all sorted to avoid a disaster in the wilderness we're intending to sail through. Also, we're buying the best thing of all, peace of mind. We want to enjoy our adventure, not spend it worrying. I just know that for the next five months until we reach Perth where really that's our next stop where we could potentially get lifted i'm just going to be so on edge wondering when the karma is going to sink for good you know what i mean i know that's a bit dramatic but when you're out in the middle of nowhere I, those thoughts creep in it's hard to know what to do sometimes and whether you're blowing things out of proportion but the stakes out on the ocean are so high so we think we've made the right decision in playing it safe and although we're a little somber, it is still exciting leaving the marina. So you might remember from when we came in here, we have to go through a lock because the tides are so significant. The tidal range is about nine meters, I believe, uh, which is pretty insane. So we're just pottering around, waiting for the guys to be ready. And uh, yeah, we'll soon be out of here. Going down quite a way, eh? We're going down. We are going down. Alright, we've just gone on to the second level. We're getting pretty low in here now. Almost done. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Good job, mate. So we lock Chili in now because she knows when we're getting the lines, getting the power in, she knows we're leaving the marina and she'll try and bail. And it's, it's delayed our departure before until she gets hungry or comes back and needs to poop or something. So we lock her up forward time to let her out. There's no escaping it now. We're going on an adventure. Hello. Kitten. There she is. We're going on an adventure. An adventure of about two nautical miles out to a bay in front of the beautiful city of Darwin. First time I get to drop the rock now. My new buddy. Well, that was a little shakedown motor. I wouldn't say it was a sail. But um, it was good because we got to get our autopilot up and working. She had a little moment there, but sh she seems good now, so that's good. And yeah, we're just gonna drop anchor in Fanny Bay, use the Rockner for the very first time, which we're pretty keen to, because this was actually where we just kept on dragging. We couldn't hold in this ground here last time. Yeah, so first time we're putting it to the TED, the ultimate test because our old anchor couldn't hold here. So let's see if the Rockner can hold. Let's what? Put it to actually, the test. That's actually, I had, hadn't even thought about that. What better place to put it to the test than the place that made me want to, yeah, want to get one? Get a Rockner. All right. Let's do it, eh? See let's what she's it. all about. This is a big moment. Woo! Ooh, put it in, yes. And away she goes. Yes. <laughs> Very slow, isn't it? I feel like it's holding. I feel like we're on. We're hooked. I feel like this is 
I haven't been this hooked since that last tuna we got. Nice. I will I will put a into reverse though just to just to see. Yeah, yeah, I'll put a bit of pepper on it, eh? That's a bit of pepper. Look at that. Whoa! On Wait. half the scope of our other anchor. While we're testing new things, we may as well take the tender for a spin where we're not being judged as hooligans out the front of lake houses. Let's see how far she can go when we don't have any speed limits. <laughs> yep, she still rips. It's nice to forget about everything that's going on and enjoy a bit of our hard work. As we said, this has always been our dream tender. So to hoon around in it is definitely a joyful break from the boat jobs. But Slim can't have all the fun on the stick. With hooning out of our system, we settled in for our first night back on anchor. Good trial by fire tonight. It's a, it's not a horrible night. It's just like a regular amount of roll. We'd give it like a six or a seven, probably like a six on the roll gauge. It's not too bad. It's not too bad. It's like a 5.5 on the roll gauge. So pretty good. It was an early night for an early rise. Good morning. It's very smoky this morning. Today is the day. We have a hard stand to get to. So today is the day that we are heading to the hard stand. It's not what we wanted to do. It's not what we planned, but thus is boat life. <laughs> Boats have a tendency to throw unexpected twists and turns in your life. And you've just got to roll with them, roll with the punches and do what you can to get through through the situations that it throws at you so we'll hopefully get nakama sea water tight and then we'll be on our merry way across to western australia so a small little hiccup but we'll be right today will be a long day uh, but we'll get through it and hopefully be on our way soon and everything in our unplanned plan was going to plan until the yard schedule stopped going to plan, which meant we'd have to get lifted later than planned. This resulted in us running aground. I think we're, we're on the bottom. Oh, are we? We've got one meter underneath us. We're on the bottom. Try and reverse. Which was not the hard standing we had initially planned on. We just had another incident and we just ran around trying to get into the slings. Um, they fell behind because they had a complication with one of the other boats they were lifting, so we're about an hour late, but we went for it anyway. Can you explain why we only have a small window to get in and out? Because the tides here are insane. We had a little window that we could get up over what's normally dry ground and into the sling, but we missed it when we That's stopped and saw brown mud all around the boat and went oh, well reversed out so we're gonna try again they normally close at 3 p.m and we were like oh we have to wait till tomorrow but they, they i think they felt bad because they were running late so they're gonna stay behind and they're gonna lift us at 5 30 this afternoon unfortunately it's another day for us like we've missed today we'll try and do whatever work we can um, but it means we'll get a full day tomorrow and then we'll go back in the water on the big high tide at 8 a.m on friday and honestly, I reckon we just catch that tide the f out of Darwin. 5.30 came around. Round two, trying to get slipped again. And we potted our way very slowly towards the slings. With a little bit more luck this time, we got Nakama into position where she was effortlessly plucked from the water surface by this enormous travel lift. Although Nakama is our super yacht, this did make us feel like a little fish in a big pond.
This is a video we never, ever wanted to make. And that's how we ended up, high and dry on the hard stand. Here we are. Here we are indeed. We'll see you next week, guys. Woo! We promise. Superflex. We've just managed to anti found a karma kind of accidentally. This, like, just this was not the plan. We'll see you then. <laughs>